In the first part of this video, we're going to review compositions of functions. Compositions often get confused with multiplying, so let me just show you the difference. Suppose I had two functions, f of x is sine squared and g of x is e to the 8x. If I multiply them, that would be sine squared x multiplied times e to the 8x. Don't get this confused with composition. Composing, which is what we're going to do next, is plugging one function into the other function. Totally different process. Here's an example. f of g of x, what is this? It's the f function with the g of x plugged into it. Okay, here our f function is sine squared. Plugged into that will be the g function. So I get sine squared with e to the 8x plugged into it. As you can see, this is not multiplication. It's composition. Sine squared is what you would call the outside function, and the e to the 8x, in this case, would be the inside function. Of course, we could do it the other way around, and the symbols will always show you what's going on. g of f of x is the opposite way. g is going to be the outside, and f is going to be the inside. Now I'm going to take the g function, which is e to the 8x, and everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the f function. So here the f is getting plugged into the g. Now the f is sine squared, so there we go. This is g of f of x. Of course, the main topic for this video is the chain rule. So if you have one function composed inside another function, how do you take the derivative of that? Here's the chain rule formula. As you can see, we've got the outside function that you take the derivative of, and then you've got the inside function, which is plugged into the f prime, and then you multiply times the derivative of the inside function. There is some alternate notation where you replace the inside function with a u, and then the chain rule looks like df du multiplied times du dx, where the u is the inside function. This alternate notation is kind of like the training wheels or the baby steps in order to do the full chain rule. We're going to start off with the alternate notation and do some examples. Don't forget that at this point in the class, here is the list of functions that we're dealing with, the power rule, exponentials, all the trig functions, the ln function, logarithms, and a general exponential. The first thing you want to do is identify what's the outside function and what's the inside function. Here we're going to do the baby steps. We're going to replace the inside function, this cosine, with a u. And then right on the side, u is equal to cosine. Now, what the chain rule says, in order to take the derivative of this, what I do is I take the derivative of the outside function with respect to u, df du, and then I multiply multiply times du dx, or multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Let's see how that works. The derivative of the outside function, e to the u, is e to the u. Multiplying times the derivative of the inside function, we get negative sign. That's it. That's the chain rule. You take the derivative of the outside function and multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Now, there is one final step, which is to put the x's back in. Here you see I've just done a little bit of simplifying, pulling the minus sign out in front. The u was equal to cosine here. Let's do another example. Here you can see my outside function is the log base 2, and the inside function is the x squared over x plus 1. Now, what we're going to do is take the entire inside function and replace it with a u, and then just write it on the side, u is equal to x squared over x plus 1. Now, the chain rule says that first I take the derivative of the outside function f with respect to u, and then I multiply times the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. Of course, the derivative of log base 2 is 1 over ln of 2 times u with respect to u, and and the derivative of the inside function with respect to x, well, it looks like that's going to require a quotient rule. Here I'm doing my low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. And this is almost to the answer. I've got a little simplifying that I can do here, just foiling in the numerator and then simplifying. But the final step here that's really crucial is that I have to put the u quantity back into my final answer. So you can see that the x squared over x plus 1 is put back in here. Now once that's in, in this particular case, I can do a little bit more simplifying. I can cancel an x plus 1. Once I do that, I can also cancel an x in every term, and it looks like this is my final answer. Let's do another one. Here we've got an outside function, which is the e, and the inside function is the negative 3x. We're just going to do the chain rule without any assistance from 
from the U notation. So here's what we do. Here's the chain rule without any U's in it. I should take the derivative of the outside function f prime. Here we go. The derivative of an exponential e is exponential e. Now what I do is I leave the g of x. This is my u. I would have previously written this as u, but in this one I'm skipping the u notation. So I'm just going to copy down negative 3x. And then I multiply times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. And there we go. That's my answer. I could do a little bit of simplifying here, bring the minus 3 out in front, and let's do another one. Here we have an outside function of e and an inside function that's 2x. We take the derivative of the outside function, which is e. Leave the inside function alone and then multiply times the derivative of the inside function. You can do this over and over again for many functions that look just like this. e to the 6x, the derivative is 6e e to the 6x, e to the minus pi x, the derivative is minus pi e to the minus pi x. Do you see a pattern? Of course. Some people like to memorize this as a formula, that the derivative of e to the ax is a times e to the ax. I'm not a huge fan of memorizing things that I don't have to memorize. It's just the chain rule. If you know how to do the chain rule, then you don't have to memorize this formula. The e is the outside function and the ax is the inside function. You just follow the chain rule. The f prime part is the e, the g of x is the ax, and the g prime is the a. Let's do another one. This is actually a trick problem. I wanted to know, would you just jump to the chain rule here without thinking about anything, without applying any critical skills whatsoever? Of course not. Remember that the ln has basic algebra. ln of a times b is ln of a plus ln of b. And one of those rules says that ln of a to the b powers equal to b times ln of a. This is just basic algebra that you should know coming into this class. So when you look at this quantity and you're about to take the derivative of it, it should stand out to you that this 3 can just come down in front before you ever take the derivative. Now once that 3 is in front, you can pull it out as a constant because derivatives are linear, and then you can just take the derivative of ln. Well that was great. There was no chain rule needed in this problem. As long as we know our basic algebra, we can do some simple Simplifying. Of course, 3 times 1 over x is the same as 3 over x. Okay, let's do another one. This is a legit chain rule problem. Can you figure out what is our outside function and what is our inside function? Of course, the outside or the f part is the ln, and the inside part is this polynomial. The chain rule says the first thing we should do is take the derivative of the outside part. The derivative of ln of u is 1 over u with respect to u. Okay, without the u notation, what I'm going to do is say, well, ln of stuff. The derivative of ln of stuff is 1 over stuff, and that's the f prime part of the chain rule. Now the g of x here, or the u, should just be copied down, and then I multiply times the derivative of the inside function, which here is 16x plus 3. And that's my final answer. Let's do another one. Here we've got the outside function being secant and the inside function being ln. We're going to skip the u notation, but of course the u is the ln of x. The first step of the chain rule is to take the outside function function and take its derivative. The derivative of secant of u with respect to u is secant u tangent u. Remember the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Now the chain rule says that I should take my f prime, which is secant tangent, and I should leave the u, or the inside function, plugged into it. Here, the ln is actually going to be plugged in in both of these slots here, and then I multiply times the derivative of the inside function, which here is 1 over x, and that's my final answer. Alrighty, now let's do a doozy of a problem. This is the great thing about doing the chain rule without writing out all those u's, is that you can do many chain rules within each other, okay? let's walk through the steps of this. What we're going to do is start on the outermost function, which here is the cosine. And the inside is going to be all of this stuff, the ln of tangent of e to the x squared plus x. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now, following the chain rule, plugged into the f prime, I should have my inside function g of x just copied down. There we go. And now, I'm just going to write it symbolically. I'm not actually going to do it until the next line. The next thing I need to do is multiply times the derivative of the inside function. So here we go. I just wrote 
wrote, take the derivative of all of this inside function stuff. Okay, so that's our first chain rule. Now we're gonna do another chain rule in order to do this piece. My new outside function is the ln, and the new inside function is just the tangent e to the x squared plus x. Okay, chain rule says, the first thing I do is take the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of ln of u, is one over u, okay? So one over all of this stuff. And now we need to multiply times the derivative of the inside function. Can you guess how we're gonna take the derivative of this piece here? You got it, it's another chain rule. Now I have a new outside function, which is tangent, and the exponential is my new inside function. Just copying down all of the stuff from the previous line here. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now I should just copy down the inside function and multiply times the derivative of the inside function. And finally, we have one more chain rule left. Wasn't that amazing? We did chain rule within chain rule within chain rule. Of course, my new outside function here is the exponential and my new inside function is just the x squared plus x. And the derivative of the exponential is exponential. I leave the x squared plus x plugged in and then I multiply times the derivative of this inside function. And so here here is my final answer. So you can see that while the U notation is great when you're starting out on some problems or just as review for composition of functions, you want to be able to move on and do the problems without relying on the U notation. You can feel free to switch in between them, but especially when you're doing chain rules within chain rules, it might be better to get to a point where you don't rely on the U notation anymore. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.